Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give him some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, yes, yes. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Don't be afraid to praise him. Don't be afraid to worship him. very much. Thank you very much for the praise. Deacon Kenny's over there telling me, you know, why smile? All that. I said, Deke, me getting here. <laughs> Anybody ever had them days? Me getting here was about all I could possibly do. This morning, my wife said, I know you're not going to church. I said, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm going to try to get there. But yet last, it was a Last, yesterday afternoon, I was watching, uh, and they have these stories, football stories of football lives. Yeah, you, remember, you know that, Joey. And on the football lives, they had Ricky Williams was playing. Anybody remember him? Remember, he was, a, he was a tough runner. And he was in a game, and they tackled him, and, and his, they, his shoulder, right, it came out, and they, they came out joint, and they took him in the locker room, and everybody said he was done. And so Ricky said he went to, you know, they went in and the doctors looked at all of them. And he th said he thought about the, the people that were looking for him. He thought about his teammates. He thought about the coaches. And they said, what you want to do? He said, man, pop that thing back in. <laughs> pop that back in. And he went out and had like an exceptional game. Now, first of all, that's a real man, right? <laughs> I'll be in there crying, like, oh, Jesus, my, my shoulder. I've seen shoulders pop out. That ain't no joke. <laughs> he just about, just pop it back in, and let's go to work. And sometimes as a soldier in the arm of the Lord, uh, you're going to have some hard days. You're going to have some hard time. But you know what? Just pop it back in. <laughs> just pop it back in, and let's stop complaining. Let's go. Let's go to work, because there's work to be done. Can you give God a praise this morning? So if I don't jump and shout and smile and all that stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat injured, but I, it's getting better. I feel, <laughs> I feel my help coming even now. And guess what? Your praise, your worship is part of that. That, that, that what, it, it, it lightens the atmosphere, right? It, it, it empowers, it infuses the atmosphere. See, we, sometimes we don't even believe in the things that we say we do, but you know what? That's why people come. We think that people come for the preaching. Y'all ain't coming to hear me. You think people come for the choir. It, it ain't, you ain't get dressed up and iron your clothes and all that stuff for that. You came because you say, somehow, some way, when I get there, I'm going to meet Jesus. And he's going to be in the place. So now the singing helps that. The preaching helps that. But you came for a blessing. And this morning, I'm praying God will bless you real good. Whatever it is that you need, whatever you are seeking from him, it's here in the building. Can you give him a praise for that? <laughs> and guess what? Those of y'all online, y'all get a blessing too. It's not just here in the building, but we just have a little something, just a little spiciness that, that's extra. Um, I, I, I do want to go over Mark 16 again um, for this reason and this reason alone. At the very end of, this is the very end of Mark. So we've got to understand Mark is closing his entire epistle. He's in closing his entire book. And he's closing it with these remarks, which are so significant for us to keep in mind. And so he says, later he, they're talking about Jesus, appeared to the eleven. So the 11 were together. Of course, you know, the 12 Judas is no longer with them. And he said, and as, as they sat at the table, so they were sitting at the table eating, the 11 of them was hanging out. 
And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So there still was some, some, some skepticism of whether Jesus was alive or not, even amongst his own people. But he did, I'm talking about, you saw me do signs and wonders and miracles. You saw me turn water to wine. You saw me walk. You saw me do all this stuff. And so why is me getting up from the dead a big deal, especially after I told you that this would happen? So he rebuked. So you can, you, you can imagine that, right? Seriously, dudes? Like, y'all sitting there, and then people told you they saw me, and you still say, you ain't seen no Jesus. Get out of here. And then he walked in on them and did that. And, and, and so he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. The New King James Version uses words we don't use in church. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. And these signs will follow those that believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak new tongues, and they will take up serpents, and they will, if they drink anything deadly, it will not any, by any means harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. They went out and preached what? Everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. And he ends it with, amen. This morning, just for a few moments, I want to speak from the subject, it's time for the signs. It's time for the signs. Now, those of you who joined us on Wednesday, if y'all remember, we talked about the sign of the times. And we were taking that from Matthew, right? Anybody was in Bible study? Y'all remember? Or y'all forgot already? Okay. So in Bible study, we were talking about, we took from Matthew, and it's a wonderful discussion. We had uh, 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 just, just a wonderful uh, dialogue going on, and that was a very nice Bible study. Thank you, everybody who participated. And in those discussions, what we were really talking about is what Jesus had said all throughout the Bible. You can see different things he said that are now coming to fruition or have come to fruition uh, throughout history. And one of the first ones was Jesus told the disciples, which was uh, still, uh, Sister Chris and Reggie, one of y'all researched that for me during the course of the week, please. I'm confused that when in Matthew, at the very first, Matthew 24, the very first verse, it was saying, and the disciples uh, showed Jesus the temple. And I'm like, did he, he never went there before or something? Like, why would he say that? That's so, I need y'all to do research. But it, it seems very, it seems somewhat interesting to me that, you know, they had to show Jesus that particular temple. Maybe he'd just never been to that where they were. I don't know. That's why I'm asking them to, so by next week, ask them, please, what happened. But the, the, the bottom line is that when he did that, Jesus made this statement. Well, I don't know why you're all so excited about this temple, as grand as it might be. He said, because not one stone will be upon another. It's going to get knocked down totally, completely, that it won't even be around. And guess what happened? In the, in the course of time, where's that temple? It's gone. It was gone. Here's the irony. That same temple that's gone, right, now we're in 2023, and there's a war going on, what, still fighting over that same basic area where the temple was, that, that, that Jesus' word is true. And he said, I'm trying to tell y'all that things are happening. So now, when we were studying that on Wednesday, he, what he was telling everybody is, I'm trying to explain to you and express to you uh, what's going to happen. And he didn't say that. Many of us get spooked by this. Oh, that's why I said, y'all don't want to read Revelation. I don't want to read Revelation or something. Now, that's not spooky. It's like telling you what the truth is. So, I mean, what the old folks just say, what? Um, forewarned is what? Forearmed. Thank you, Sister Dorian. <laughs> Me and her both know that word. <laughs> and, and so if forewarned, if forewarned is forearmed, all Jesus is saying is, dudes, pay attention. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I even speak to my kids and all that, and they're like, what are we going to do about all these things happening? No, you can't do nothing. Jesus said it will happen. As a matter of fact, he goes as bold to say, y'all be better hope I come back. He said, because if I don't come back, no flesh at all will be saved. Our salvation, I got news for y'all saved and sanctified folk. Our salvation is not based upon 
you, you being so holy. It's not based upon you being so spiritual. It's not based upon how much you praise and worship. You know what our salvation is? It's based upon Jesus Christ and him alone. Because he says, if I don't come back... <laughs> With your same self, the devil got something for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. You let me know. Come back and see what happened. You think you can handle everything. You think you can go through everything. You think, I, I'll never leave Jesus. Well, guess who else said that? Remember Peter said that? I, I will never. And what he said? Three days, man. <laughs> I mean, excuse me, you're going to deny me three times. And that very night, he denied it. Well, Jesus is now saying, I'm trying to tell y'all, there's stuff coming. And you got to, what, prepare yourself. It wasn't to scare us. It was to prepare us. It wasn't to make us frightened, but to let you know that soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Can you give God a praise right now? <laughs> now, here's, now, this is interesting as well. So... You've got to understand, the gospel which we preach is very difficult from a human standpoint to get anybody to believe. Seriously, think about it. So the first thing I tell you, okay, let me tell you, this guy was born way back when to a virgin. All right, so now number one, oh, dude, stop, stop. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, for real, for real. His mom was a virgin. He was born, right? Uh, his daddy's God, and he was born. Okay, what else happened? And then he lived like this perfect life. So he lived a perfect life. Yup, he lived a perfect life. Um, by the time he got 30, he started this three and a half year ministry. He went around healing people. He healed people, yes. Healed, uh, blind eyes were open, lame, uh, um, all kinds of stuff. He turned water into wine. Oh, what? He walked, matter of fact, he walked on water. He used to tell the storm to behave. His boy Lazarus died. He said, Lazarus, get up. He did all this. So this guy who's born to a virgin, let me get this right. He was born to a virgin. He went around, lived a perfect life. And, and, and then he did miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes, he did all that. What else? Is there anything else? Guess what? That's not even the good part yet. All right, so they hated him, and guess, and he put him on a cross. Now, one thing we all know, if you put somebody on a cross, you're dead, dead. You're not just dead, but you are completely dead. There is no chance that you could survive that. He went on a cross, and he was dead. They put him in a grave, and then he got up. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> you're going crazy now. Now you're telling me all this happened with this guy. Yes, I'm telling you. Oh, all right, so th that's got to be the end. No, that ain't even the end. So the guy who got up, people saw him. He went around. Everybody witnessed him so he could make sure that y'all saw him. Then he ascended into heaven. He's sitting on the right hand of God at the moment, and guess what? He's coming back. Oh, <laughs> come on. You can't expect me to believe that. I not only expect you to believe Believe it, right? It is the truth. Now, here is the thing. How do you know that it is true? What sign do you have? What evidence do you have? And then we studied it last week. It's the signs of the time. Jesus said, all right, if you don't believe me, my own disciples had some unbelief. So I don't blame y'all for not believing because they saw me do miracles and they still doubt it. So don't feel bad if you have some trepidation or fear. Don't feel bad if you have some skepticism. It's a natural human thing. But here's the thing that, that messes with our skepticism. Because if he had, if somebody just told you that and nothing else happened, we would that would be hard to prove, right? But Jesus said, I'm gonna tell you what the future's gonna be. I'm not gonna even be here, and I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. There's gonna be wars and rumors of wars. Is there not rewards and rumors of war? There's gonna be pestilence and things are going to happen. And we're like, wait a minute. And so that's why it's important now. Wait, I gotta study this Bible. Not only are there wars and rumors of wars, there's things happening. Oh, I love the Bible where it says now Israel's gonna go back after all these years, Israel's gonna at some point go back. I said they can't go back. There are people already living there, and they're just thinking it's impossible. 19 what was it, 1948? Israel goes back. I said, oh my goodness, Jesus was real. He is real, and he is at the Father, and he is coming back. And so he continues to have all this evidence. It's evidence-based salvation. We're not just talking about a feeling or emotion, but we got evidence. Our God is true, and, and whatever he says is going to come to pass will come to pass. He cannot lie. He is not a man that he should lie. And so now we all see and we all understand. And so when we go to tell the world about this Jesus who's coming back, we have some evidence. 
evidence. And the more we study and the more we understand, this is why we need to start digging into Revelation and see what else. Because a lot of stuff has happened, but everything hasn't happened yet. Oh, no. And some of the things that's about to happen, well, church, we got to get ready for it. We sitting around acting like it's always going to be like this. No, no, no. The Bible already proclaimed. I'm telling you, uh, Satan coming for y'all. Y'all so comfortable and y'all so wonderful and, and you just uh, uh, look lovely and have everything going for you. Don't believe the hype that Satan is trying to come. The, Jesus, when, when he saw his disciples, he said, well, Satan wants to take what sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you. That what? I didn't pray for you that you're not sifted. I didn't pray for you that Satan don't come, but I prayed what? That your faith fail not. Oh, uh, we got to hold on. See, so we keep holding on uh, to, to what we have. We hold on to our money. We hold on to our tradition. We hold on to uh, you know, our, our reputation, but the truth of the matter is the only thing that's going to sustain you is when you hold on to your faith. I, I wonder this morning, anybody holding on to your faith? Uh, that, that your faith not fail. Because the day will come, your money going to fail. The day is going to come when, when, when your neighbor is going to fail, when your family is going to fail you, when people are going to let you down. Well, well, guess what? I got news for you. The day will come when the church will fail you. But as long as my faith don't fail me, as long as I hold on to his unchanging hand, if none of y'all support me, if none of y'all, guess what? As long as I got Jesus, I got enough. Do I have a witness right here? <laughs> he said, that's why you're not scared. I got Jesus. But I hold on to my faith. And so my faith is in him. And my faith is emboldened because of the things he said and proclaimed have come true. The sign of the times. But this morning I want to talk about this is time for the sign. Because in this process of salvation, in this process of our king coming back, there's one more thing. And he says what? These signs shall follow them that believe. The final step in him proving that he's God, the final step in proving that he's coming back is, guess what? I hate to tell you, it's you and me. It's you and me because he says, what? Well, for those who believe, right, we don't follow the signs anymore. But guess what? The signs Follow us. <laughs> I wish y'all could understand how powerful it is. When the signs we don't follow after, when I'm not looking for another sign to believe in Jesus, I don't need for anything to happen. I believe in him with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know, nothing else has to happen for me to trust him. And so now, why, why is that true? Because I'm a believer. And once I'm believing, people that don't believe need a sign. I, I need some. I need some proof that Jesus lives. I need, and so what He does for you, He'll give you a sign. As anybody before you came to the Lord, did you ever get a sign from God that something's happened? I'm, I guarantee you, each and every one of us got a sign. Something happened in your life. Something happened. You could have been sleeping, had a dream, and you woke up. It's like I, I got to go to church somewhere. I got to find Jesus because I got a sign. Something happened with your family. Something happened in your relationship. Something happened in your mind. Something happened in your job. Something happened with your money. So your Money got funny. Now all kinds of things happen, and you say, "What's going on?" And, and here comes Jesus speaking. The same Jesus that's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you, is the same Jesus that sends His Spirit and said, "Now, are you ready? Now, are you ready to serve me now?" And you might have said no a hundred times, but you say, "You know what? You just sent me enough signs. I don't need not near another sign. I'm ready, Jesus. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to say, oh, I'm ready to do it. Why? Because you, He sends you these signs." Right, And that's when you were an unbeliever. But after a while, you learn how, how to read your Bible. You learn uh, well, not just how to read the words, uh, but how to get revelation from the Bible. And you learn how, how to listen to the Holy Spirit that's in you. The Bible declares that, that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. What power for what? Uh, not to fight and to scuffle, but you've got to have power what? to be a witness unto the world. Uh, and and this, by this witness, that means what? Well, I'm able to do what the world can't do. I believe what the world can't believe because what well, I know where I'm going and I know who I am. I, I understand who I am and whose I am. And because I understand that, I'm no longer looking for signs. But guess what? I am the sign. Uh, people need to look at me and then they'll understand where Jesus is. People need to be looking at you and understand uh, if this person can go through that and still have faith. If that person can go through hell and, high, and, 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 and water waters and tides that come and to, to overflow you and you still didn't drown. 
You still didn't die. You still come up and pop up like that. You still walk on top of the ocean with Jesus. You still are able to go through. When that happens, there's something different about you. And you become the sign. I was uh, traveling uh, the other day, and I was traveling down um, Stelton Road. And, and, and some of y'all know that over in Pat, the Scataway area. And so now, here's the thing. Uh, I grew up, well, I say grew up, went to college right over there. And years ago, there was nothing. When I say nothing, there was nothing over there except, anybody remember there's just one path mark in the middle of nowhere? Why they would do that, I don't I know. That's all, that's maybe why path mark went out of business. There's a path mark over there and nothing else, just trees and, and nothing you would go for. And so I was going the other day, and I noticed how they built that up crazy. As a matter of fact, I, don't care, I can't remember where that path mark used to be. All those stores weren't there, the, the little malls, none of that stuff was there. And for a moment, have you ever been driving, you get lost in your thought, and then I, did, I forgot where I was. I was like, oh, Jesus. Like, I just, I just really, like, blame. I don't know if that happens to y'all, but <laughs> get old enough. You hit with <laughs> I had a senior moment that I was literally lost, for real, for real. Like, what street am I on? Where I go? What town I am? <laughs> am, I, am I in America anymore? I mean, I was just lost, right? Until I looked over to the left, and I saw a sign that said Ethel Road. I said, ah. Oh. Joey, you know Ethel Road. And so, so, so Ethel, Ethel Road, you can take Ethel and go back to Rutgers. And so what happened is that brought it back. I know where I am. Why? Because I saw the sign. I saw the sign, and now be, because I wasn't familiar with that territory any longer, I can, un, I can find my way. The signs are very helpful to navigating where you're going. However, now if you took me back to East Orange, where I grew up and walked every street, every place, I don't need no signs, nowhere, because I know that place so well. They could build all the buildings they want. I was still no Main Street. They could do whatever they want. They could put a mall on 19th Street. I said, no, me and my mama didn't know. I used to live right here. When you know it so well that you don't forget it because it's part of who you are. I always think about my wife who's in South Carolina. And when we go down there, I just get out the car and she has to drive. I, I could drive all the way there, but when we get there, because she wants you to turn on, just turn over there on the dirt road. What dirt road? <laughs> I'm not turning down no dirt road. Where are we going? Don't worry. If you turn down this dirt road and you go around here and there's a house that burnt down and it just had this chimney thing left and you go past there and you... <laughs> And you will see uh, Miss Sally's house. I don't know Miss Sally or her house. I'm not driving on the road. I don't know. But guess what? She can navigate because she don't need a sign. There ain't no signs down there. But you what? Because I know it so well. Well, I got good news for you. This is why now those of us who know Jesus, we're not looking for signs, but we are the sign. And, and, and I don't need nothing special, but I can go where God wants me to go by because I know him. When you know him like, for yourself, right, I, I understand. And I can tell you, somebody needs to be coming to you and say, how can I get to Jesus? Oh, you got to go down. Let me tell you right now. You got to pin in the pad. Write this down. I, I, you, what you got to do is you got to pray and, and, and and, and guess what? You, and sometimes uh, you can't be just praying. Sometimes you got to put a little prayer and fasting with it because if this kind comes out, everything don't come out just by praying. But sometimes you got to pray and fast. You got to what? You got to spend some time with Jesus. I know you spend time in church, but you got to go home and, and get in your secret closet. That's the direction. And you got to stay there. And you know what? Don't always talk to him. Sometimes shut your mouth and listen. Sometimes don't say nothing and just trust, Lord, I'm just listening for you. Holy Ghost, speak to me. Speak to me. And guess what? It was The Holy Ghost will speak to you. He will talk, talk to you in your ear in a sweet, small voice. And you will know that it's God and nobody else. Has, and give you direction. And give you power. And give you authority. And give you, oh yeah, what you're looking for. There are things you've got to do. But you don't know it until you get what somebody to tell you what are the signs of the time. What's the direction to Jesus? And after you do that, just, put, just surrender 
it to them. Lift up your hands and surrender. Folk want to know how to get saved. They want to know how to be sanctified. They want to know how to get out of the trouble to end. They want to know how to keep their marriage together. They want to know how to get their life together. People's lives are falling apart, and we just hear clapping and singing. But guess what? We got to go. It says here, they went everywhere. They didn't just go here, but it said the disciples said, it's time to go everywhere. We believe Jesus now. We know him now. We don't need no signs now, but we're going to go tell the world that Jesus saves. How do you know he saves? Because he saved me. How do you know he delivered? Because he delivered me. He brought me out of the miry clay and placed my feet on a rock to stay. How are you going to tell me that Jesus can't do it when he did it for me? I was a wretch undone. He shouldn't have saved me. There was no reason he should have did it. There's no reason I should be here today, but God gave me what? His grace and his mercy and followed me all the days of my life, and now I'm here. I'm here as a witness. Hallelujah. I'm here. Do I have any other witnesses in the building this morning? I'm here as a witness. He saves to the utmost, from the guttermost to the utmost, somebody said. He saves. And that's what we have to understand, how significant our salvation is. It ain't just for you to come dress up nice and come on Sunday morning. This is just a, well, this is a gathering fellowship. But guess what tomorrow is? Tomorrow got work day. It's time to go to work, y'all. Look, take these clothes off. You got to put your work clothes on. <laughs> well, what you to me? I'm not talking about your secular job. I'm talking about your spiritual job. Oh, yeah, it's time to go to work. This, these are the last days. Somebody needs to know Jesus. And so you got to say, well, Lord, I, I know I got to go meet the man. <laughs> but guess what? In the meantime, in between time, I do have breaks. I do have lunch. Is there anybody I can talk to? Uh, uh, is there anything I can do? I do go to the mall every now and then. What about them children that's there? Can I tell them? Is there a way I can show them? I am on the Internet half the day. Maybe I can just send somebody a word of encouragement. So maybe I can just tell somebody that Jesus saves. Maybe I can just tell somebody that, that he's able. I know what you're going through. Maybe some Somebody be laying on your heart, and you just can pray for them. You don't even have to call them, but you can pray for them right where you're sitting. So God will send people in your mind, send people in your heart just to pray for them. Lift them up. Somebody is grieving the loss of a dear loved one. Somebody's mama died. Somebody's child died. Somebody's daddy. And you guess what? You could be that comforter. You could be that person by because you have. Oh, I got news for you. You have the sign. <laughs> you know the direction. You are the sign. Oh yeah, He put it in you. He said, what, we are lights on a hill. What did he say? And you can't hide. So you, you know what? The worst pe people to try to hide is Christians. You know what? It's like, we, we, you know why we can't hide? Because we are luminous. It's like playing hide and seek. And you, and you are a bright light. <laughs> you can't hide. Like, where can you go right there? Anybody ever know, go and, and you try to hide and try to be cool and act like, I don't know Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to go to my favorite bar back in the day and hang out. And like, what you doing? <laughs> what you mean what I'm doing? <laughs> my money ain't good here? No, get out of here. <laughs> you know good and well. <laughs> you have no business being here. And there are things that happen in your life. I know I have a witness that you're saying, you know what? Uh, he's marked me. As hard as I try not to be marked, I'm already marked. <laughs> right, Ronnie? <laughs> Like, listen, we marked this. And so you might as well get on board because he ain't going to let you go. Because I'll never leave. I'll never. You said, well, you should have left me after all I've done. You know, it's a, I, but Jesus said, let me, I said, I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. So what difference does it make what you do? We, hurt, we are harder on ourselves than the Lord will ever be. He said, no, dude, you act like I didn't know you was going to mess up. <laughs> you act like I didn't know that you was a knucklehead. I knew you was a knucklehead before you was born. <laughs> so it's not a surprise. You can't surprise God. <laughs> He's like, I told you the beginning from the end, and I told you that for your comfort, right, so that you would, you'd be ready when he comes. Finally, there was a story that Jesus told about five wise virgins and five foolish and we, you know, and he, this wasn't just story time. Jesus doesn't just tell these stories for no reason. But he's saying that the time will come that if you're not ready, you know, I'm not going to talk about the ones who were ready. That's wonderful. But what about the ones that weren't ready? And it wasn't because they didn't have oil at one point. They didn't have anointing at one point. But over the course of time, something happened. 
And so he told the story. Why? Not so that you worry about that being you, so that you may go get your oil right now <laughs> to make sure. Listen, as a matter of fact, I'm going to get some extra. <laughs> keep some, keep some. You know how, how we do. Come and keep some in, in the garage. Just in case, I'm gonna keep some in the basement, some extra oil. Y'all know how y'all do. We we go to Costco. I'm gonna get, <laughs> I'm gonna get bundles of stuff. You know, when, when we had something, we had everybody. I don't know why all everybody, all of us ran and get toilet paper. We got so much toilet paper in the basement. Everybody just start getting stuff and getting. And, and what else goes fast? All this stuff that goes. What? Guess what? Forget that stuff. You know what you need to get more anointing. That's what we need to be gathering more anointing from the Lord, and it's possible that we need to get closer to him, that we need to get what, uh, uh, our hearts need to get, to get more passionate for his people and for the people of God. And so with that, I'm done, y'all. I just feel the Lord this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you. <laughs> but I, 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 I do want to make a passionate plea this morning for somebody who may not know Jesus. And, 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 and listen, you've got a church full of, of, of lights here. You got a church full what, of sign bearers. You know, here's the one thing I love. I'm, I said I was going to stop at one more, one more analogy, all right? Here's this last analogy is that in every town, let's just use Springfield, and we know, I don't know Springfield hardly all. I know this, these couple of streets here, and I, I pronounced them wrong, so I'm not going to even say them now. And I know a couple of streets, of course, South Springfield Avenue, whatever. But somebody, I don't know who it was, put them signs up. Somebody had to hang the signs in the first place. And that person, well, those people knew this town intimately, right? Because you can't put signs up if you don't know where you are. That makes sense? So that person say, so they got a bunch of signs, and they're like, uh, <laughs> they can't be lost at all. They said, dude, I know exactly where the signs are. And they put them up. There's people in this audience, but how many know Jesus for real, for real? I know exactly who Jesus is, right? And so you are a sign bearer, and it's time for us to put our signs up and let your light so shine upon, among men, what that they glorify your Father, which is in heaven. I'm asking this morning, is there one that's saying, I want to be a sign bearer too? I had questions, but my questions are answered. I had trepidation and fear, but that's all gone. I had doubt in my mind, but the doubt is gone. Jesus' testimony proved that he is God. He is with the what? On the right hand of the Father and his spirit in these people. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love that. This his spirit and these people have convinced me. And guess what? If he could save you, I bet he could save me too. If he could, what? If he could forgive you, I bet you he could forgive me. Is there one this morning that said, I need that forgiveness. I want that salvation. I need that Jesus in my life. Is there one? I, I, I don't want to be, you know, just be remiss to ask the question ever. Because sometimes you think everyone is saved and they may not be. And so I want you to know this is an opportunity. And guess what? This is not your last opportunity. If you don't do it right now, go home and just continue to believe in him. Trust him. You online do the same thing. He wants to save you. Hallelujah. He wants to bring you out of the darkness and into this marvelous light. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all ready? Thank you, Jesus. To go to work tomorrow? <laughs> Get your lunch pail? <laughs> what? My daily bread? <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread. Every day, you're going to do what the Lord has for you to do. Do you need prayer this morning? Anybody who needs prayer for anything specific in your life? Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, I see the hell. Oh, my goodness. Is there anybody? There's not probably nobody who doesn't need that. And so if you don't mind, can you, let's rise to our feet as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. That's the song right there. To the utmost. To the utmost. To the utmost. What? Jesus said. To the utmost. To the utmost. Jesus said. Sing that with us to the utmost. Come on. To the utmost. Yes, yes, come on. 
church. Jesus said to the unknown, Jesus said he will lift you up and turn you around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, knowing for certain, hallelujah, that you have all power in your hand, knowing for certain that you have proven you did nothing more that needs to be done to convince us that you are God, that you are powerful, that you are loving, that you are caring. And we come just asking, oh God, that you will accept our praise, accept our worship, even as it is, Lord. For we are, know that we are frail, and we know that we are, are, are faulty uh, and have fallen, but you have picked us up with your blood. You have picked us up with your love and established us, hallelujah, on a hill that can, oh God, where we cannot be hid. We thank you now for illuminating us. We thank you for saving us. And we ask even now, Lord, that you would touch every one of your servants. Oh, God, touch their bodies, touch their minds, touch, oh, God, their emotions, touch them at the very core that they may serve you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, with, with, with power and purpose, oh, God, serve you, oh, God, with everything that we have. We thank you now for this time and these very precious people that you love and have died for. We ask even now as we leave this place, we never leave your presence. Go with us, be in us, work through us. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Can all the church say amen? God bless y'all. God bless y'all.